Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a couple basic stretchy layering tank tops. If this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, my name's Rachel. Thanks for stopping by. I like to make stuff here, and since I've primarily been sewing lately, you can expect to see a little bit of personal style chit chat here too. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna be making a couple stretchy tank tops today. And if you watch my video about all of the sewing patterns I was interested in using for spring and summer, you will recognize this pattern right here. It's the Lola tank, and it's by Stay Stitch Pattern Co. I do already have some stretchy tank tops in my wardrobe, some that I made last summer using this pattern by Eason Stitches. It's called the Kate tank top. And I really love this tank top, but I did feel like I needed a few more tank tops in my wardrobe and wanted to use a different sewing pattern this time that had just a different look to it overall. So that is why I chose this pattern right here. I just thought that the neckline on this pattern was really unique. I really love how dramatic that curve in at the top is, and I haven't really seen this on a lot of other sewing patterns that I've looked at. So I thought that this would be just different enough than the Kate tank top so that I could have both in my wardrobe. And also I wanna make this one in a couple fun prints. So I'll show you guys the fabrics that I'm gonna be using. Here they are. So I do have a couple cheerful prints and then I have just like a simple white. So the first one I'm gonna be using is this one right here. It's just this really cute daisy print on kind of like a muted coral background. This was a remnant at the fabric store and so I got two odd shaped pieces of this. They're only like this wide, but they're really long. So I feel like I'm gonna be able to make a tank top for myself out of this and then also maybe something for my daughter too, maybe some leggings or something. And then I have this fabric. This is a fabric that I actually got for a project for my daughter. I've made her some pants out of this and I plan on making her a long sleeve shirt out of this too. But I do have quite a bit of this. So it's got some dusty colors in it. It's like blue and rose color and a little bit of purple. And then there's also this green in it that I really, really love. So I know that these are more of like summer colors, but I feel like these are ones that I can kind of pull off a little bit. I feel like I can borrow quite a bit from summer, but Okay, let's do a little bit of draping here. So there's that, but then look at this. Does it look any better to you guys? This is definitely um, a warm color. So I feel like this just kind of makes me look a little bit more drained, right? I have makeup on, so this is not accurate at all, but this is what I look like in the summer colors. And then autumn, and then summer, and then autumn. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, so even though these colors are pretty cool, I do feel like I have a lot in my wardrobe that goes with this, especially the green in this print. I have a lot in that color. I feel like it's one of my most favorite colors to wear. But yeah, I feel like these are just kind of fun and cheerful and springy. Also, something I've noticed since I've moved to San Francisco is I want to wear more color. I feel like I am surrounded by bright, cheerful colors here. All the houses are painted different colors. So something funny that I've noticed is that I like to mirror the colors of my environment in my outfits. <laughs> and now that I'm living in San Francisco, I really want to find ways to wear brighter, more cheerful colors. So I feel like both of these kind of accomplish that. Even with like an all neutral outfit, I feel like I can add one of these and it kind of adds a little bit of color, but still colors that work for me. They're not super bright and fluorescent, but they do add that like happy touch, if that makes sense. And this right here is just some solid off-white jersey. I got quite a bit of this because I use it pretty often. I've already made a couple tank tops out of this before, and I feel like they're the tank tops that I just throw under everything, so I'm really glad that I got a lot of this. Now, this is off-white, but on me, it reads like white wipes. Some white wipes read kind of like icy on me, but this really reads white on me, even though it's pretty clearly off-white if you're just like looking at it, especially compared to other whites, I guess. Do you see? And then also I had an idea. So since this jersey is pretty thin, I don't think I'd want to make like a single layer tank top with just this. So here's what I wanna do. For the first tank top that I make, I want to use this fabric on one side and I wanna use this fabric on the other side. It will make it double layered. And then I want to see if I can make it it reversible. So one way it's gonna be all solid, this coral print, and then the other side, it's going to be this in the middle with this bordering the outside, if that makes sense. I think I know how I'm gonna do it. So last summer when I made this tank top, it's the Summer Camisole by Paradise Patterns. I really like it. It has a built-in bra, so the top part of it is double layered and it also has that border detail on it. What is that called? I think I'm gonna use that same technique, which is basically just putting the fabric pieces together and sewing them around the edges, just doing kind of a basting stitch around the edges before sewing them to the other pieces of the garment. So I'm gonna do that and then hopefully I will end up with a perfect, nice, thick, reversible tank. 
tank top we'll see so i really don't like to wear a real bra with like any of my clothes even if i wear like a little stretchy bra under one of my shirts i always wear these silicone covers i can actually link those below i recommend them to like everybody especially under spaghetti strap tops and stuff i don't need very much support at all so i feel like that's probably why they work for me anyway that is why i want to make these a little bit thicker just so that i don't feel the need to wear an actual structured bra underneath but yeah i guess it's time to cut out some fabric so i'm gonna go do that now and then i probably won't start sewing until later on tonight so i will see you then Hey guys, okay, so I just finished the side seams and the shoulder seams on both of these pieces. So the reason I'm making two is because this is going to be one side and then this is gonna be the other side. Now to make it reversible, I'm going to put them wrong sides facing. So I'm gonna to have to flip one of these inside out, well, right side out. And then I'm going to put this one inside of here and then I'm going to do a basting stitch all the way around the neck hole and then the arm holes to hold these two pieces together. And I'm just gonna do that with like a long zigzag stitch. So it's gonna be almost straight, but it's still gonna be zigzag so that it can stretch. And that seam is going to be covered up by the binding. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. And then after I do that, then I can just do the binding and then I'm gonna do the hem. And I think I'm gonna do like an invisible hem. So I'll show you guys what that looks like when I get there. But so far so good. I did make a little bit of an adjustment because I put one of these on just to see how closely it fit to my body. And it felt a little bit roomy in the bust area so I just kind of straightened out that curved line to make it a little bit straighter at the top and then it still is curved at the bottom. So I'm gonna go put these together and then we can move on to the binding. Okay, so one thing that I was just thinking about when I was sewing is a little trick that I do, and I'm sure a lot of you do this, but some of you who aren't super familiar with knits, with knits, you have to be really careful that you're not pulling it tight as you're sewing, or else it's gonna end up looking a little bit lettuce-y. It's gonna start getting wiggly. So what I try to do, if I notice that there's a little bit of tension, so I'm gonna show you guys really quick. And then there starts to be like this little bubble right here because there's a little tension. I just lift up the presser foot and it all springs in to release that tension so that you make sure that you're not pulling the fabric too tight. I don't know if I explained that well. All right, so moving on to the armholes now. And I wanted to point out that wherever there are two surged edges that are meeting, I like to make them go in opposite directions. So this one is going to be pointing this way and this one's gonna be pointing this way. That just helps to reduce bulk. And then that really lines up that seam. So this side, and this side are like exactly lined up and then those surged edges aren't layered on top of each other. They're just going in opposite directions. Okay, so I just finished doing the arm and neck hole, and so this is all stuck together now, it's all secure. I forgot to mention that at the end, you can also take this basting stitch out if it's exposed. I did leave the tension pretty loose. It's just kind of loosely stitched together. So next, I'm going to add all of the binding on it. So the way this pattern is designed, you're supposed to fold this in half, and then you're gonna like surge it to one side and then flip it over. So on the inside, there will be a seam allowance. But since I want this to be reversible, we're gonna be doing it a different way. So I'm gonna be making a loop out of this and then I'm going to fully encase the edge. So, sorry, I'm like getting super sweaty. So I'm gonna fully encase the edge by sewing this on right sides facing. And I'm gonna do, I don't know, like a quarter inch seam allowance, maybe a little bit less than that so that I can fold this over. Okay, I'm just gonna show you guys this way. So I'm gonna put these right sides facing and then I'm gonna do a little seam here. So it's gonna be like a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I can flip that over like this and then I can flip it over the other side and then I'm going to do a top stitch over the top of all of this. And that's gonna be a zigzag stitch. So this is going to be fully encased. I hope that this is, I hope I, this is wide enough. I might need to recut these so that they're a little bit wider because I thought that it was gonna be wide enough, but I think I'm gonna make this a quarter inch wider 
I think I'm just gonna do that really quickly. I just don't think that this is gonna be wide enough to give me the binding that I really want on the edges. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll probably just do the neck hole tonight just to see what that looks like. And then tomorrow I can do the armholes and then the bottom. This has come together really quickly so I do think that I'll be able to start on the other ones tomorrow. <laughs> this is flattering lighting. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay, so it's the next day now and my daughter's at school so I have about an hour and a half to do some sewing. So I think I can finish this top right here. This is what it looks like right now. So the top, the whole neck hole is done and you can see what that looks like on the other side there. So, so far it's turning out really good. I just need to do the armholes and then I'm gonna do the hem. So I'm hoping I can finish this in that time and then maybe even start another one. So let's go. So I just finished all of the holes, the neck hole and the arm holes, and this turned out so cute. I actually tried it on already. I love how thick it is. I feel like it making it double layered just makes it feel more luxurious, I guess. So I think even if I don't make all of them reversible, I still want to make them double layered, if that makes sense. It just makes them a little bit more cozy and they feel just more secure, I guess. I feel like this turned out really good if you wanna see the top. This is what it looks like this way. And then I flip it around and then this is what it will look like this way. So now I'm gonna do the bottom hem. I should have made this a tiny bit longer because it comes right underneath my belly button and I wanted it a little bit longer than that. So I was considering doing just a lettuce hem on this to maintain the length, but I still think that I want the bottom to be straight. You know what, now I'm thinking about it more and I feel like with this print, the lettuce hem would be really cute. You know what I'm gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna do it the way that I was planning on doing it before, and then if it's too short, I can always take it all out and then do a lettuce hem. So I'm gonna kind of burrito this. I don't know what this method is called, but I will show you guys. I'll try to do it slowly so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the goal is to get this and this right sides together, so it'll be sewn like this eventually. So first we're gonna take this front piece and then loop it back, and then take this back piece and then we're gonna put them front sides facing together like this. So you kind of have a croissant, I guess. So then I'm just gonna pin this like this and then we're gonna keep pulling these sides together then just pinning. So, so as I'm sewing, I'm just gonna keep pulling more and more around and then at some point we're going to have sewn all the way around the bottom of the shirt then I'm gonna leave a little hole to pull the entire shirt through and then I can hand stitch that little hole shut. So hopefully this works. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around to the bottom. Where am I here? Um, what am I doing here? Okay, here is the hole. So I went all the way around the bottom and now I get to turn the shirt inside out. So I actually had to make the hole a little bit bigger because I didn't think that I left enough space to completely turn the shirt inside out, but now it's plenty big and that's what it looks like. So now I've got 
kind of like an invisible seam all along the bottom and then I have that little opening that I just need to close. So now I'm just gonna go press along this whole bottom edge just to get that seam like right to the edge and then I can match that up with this. That is the finished bottom. Okay, so this is perfect. I just finished it and I tried it on and it's so cute. So I'm really excited to make more of these. I'm gonna start cutting out some fabric right now. And if I decide to do a lettuce hem on one of them, I'll make sure to show you guys. But this turned out really great at the bottom and I actually feel like this is the perfect length. So maybe I'll just do the same thing again. I'm gonna go make some more and then I'll show you guys the rest when I'm finished. You guys, this tank top is perfect. I'm wearing the white one today. I love it so much. I feel like this neckline is really fun and different, but it's still simple. I have actually worn all three of these so far and it's only been a week of me having them. So I feel like these are going to be kind of like my new staple tank top. I love my Kate tank tops. I love my summer tank tops, but these are really fun. I'm really glad that I made them because I feel like now I have all the tank tops I could ever want, like stretchy tank tops, I guess. I'm really glad that I made these reversible. I even made the white one reversible too because now I have two chances to keep it white. <laughs> I feel like whenever I wear anything white, I always end up staining it right away. And one nice thing about white is that sometimes it can be bleached out, but now I even have one more chance. So I can wear it this way or I can wear it the other way and it's exactly the same on both sides. I did think about making this one just single layered, but then I realized that on a white shirt, that is like exactly not what I want. <laughs> So adding a double layer to this white tank top really makes it super opaque. So it's not see-through at all. And I feel really secure wearing this just on its own too. Also, I feel like the double layer really makes it feel like a pricey tank top. Like it feels expensive, it feels cozy, and it feels like luxurious and nice and thick. So I really love that in a tank top, especially here in San Francisco. I think I can get away with wearing a thick fitted tank top. Maybe in some climates, like really hot and humid climates, that might be a little bit uncomfortable comfortable but for where I live I feel like it's perfect so yeah I might make a couple more solid tank tops just because I feel like this neckline poking out of the top of something adds a little bit of interest and if I'm wearing something over the top sometimes it's patterned or sometimes it's textured or something so I feel like I would get a lot of use out of these in solid colors but I also really love the patterns that I tried out. These are both just kind of fun and cheerful, and I feel like they're going to add a little bit of happy spring feeling to some of my outfits. And I just feel like these kind of remind me of like the early 2000s. So I was, let's see. Like I remember in elementary school and middle school when everybody was wearing like the hibiscus print and stuff like that. And all of that is kind of coming back now, which is kind of fun. I feel like I don't usually wear little prints. And I don't know, I feel like sometimes I'm a little bit intimidated by basics in prints just because I have other pieces that I'm gonna want to put them with that are also printed. And so I've been playing around with mixing prints a little bit with these and it's just been really fun. So I will definitely be making more of these. I'll still keep them double layered. I haven't tried the version with the single 
single layer, but I think that I would if I was using a little bit thicker fabric or a ribbed knit or something. I feel like a single layer would be plenty, but just in this really soft buttery jersey, I think that the double layer really adds the feeling that I want, that weight and that coverage that I want. This is without a bra on a white shirt. So I'm just wearing some silicone little covers. You obviously don't have to wear anything if you don't wanna wear a bra, but I feel like for myself, I feel a little bit more comfortable if I just wear some silicone covers. These ones are great. They can be washed, they can be reworn like a million times. So I'll make sure to link those below for you guys. But of course, if you need more support, then I would probably wear a bra with these. With the double layer, they do offer a little bit of compression, so that could be helpful. But if you need more support, then yeah, you'd probably need like a special, like a racer back bra or something. Or like one of those convertible bras where you can do like the cross front thing, I think would work for this too. All around, really good pattern, good instructions. I can't speak on like the full instructions just because I didn't use a twin needle to do the hem. I didn't do some of the things that would have been necessary if I was just doing like one single layer. And then I did a couple extra things since I was adding the second layer. So I hope I was clear enough with my explanation of how I made this reversible. So if you want to make it reversible, hopefully this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them the best that I can. But yeah, I think that's everything I have for you guys today. Also, you guys, I just hit 10,000 subscribers today and I cannot believe it. I still really can't wrap my head around it. I remember when I first started this channel and I got like 20 subscribers and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a whole classroom of people coming to watch my videos. And I can't imagine like sitting in front of a classroom and like talking about sewing to 20 people. So now that there are 10,000 of you, it just, it blows my mind. So thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, for liking my videos enough to subscribe to my channel. So I think it'd be fun to do kind of a Q and A video so you guys can get to know me a little bit better and we can just like chit chat about questions that you have. They can be questions about whatever you want. They don't have to be even sewing related. If you guys just have questions about me, feel free to ask those too. So I think I'm gonna make a post at some point this week and you guys can ask the questions in the comments. If you do wanna ask the questions just right now so you don't forget, you can add a question just to the comments right now and make sure to add like a cue right before it so I know to save that for the video. Otherwise you guys can feel free to comment as you usually would ask questions about the video and everything but if you do want me to save your question for that video make sure to put a cue in front of it and I will know that that is saved for the video but yeah when I first started my channel I was just going to be documenting my sewing progress and I really thought that it was just going to be people I know people I'm friends with that followed me to kind of see what I was up to and sewing and everything so I never imagined that all of you would be interested in watching me sew too so I just really appreciate you guys and I am really excited to keep sharing these videos. So thank you so much for sticking around I know that there were some parts of the year that I wasn't really posting videos because we we're in the middle of a move And I'm sure there will be more times like that in the upcoming years just as our family continues to go through these transitions So yeah, I'm just really thankful to have a community of people here who are patient with me and who are excited about what I'm making And I just want you guys to know how thankful I am that all of you guys are here. So thank you. Anyway, Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider doing that. And if you like this video, like this video. If you didn't like this video, then I hope you like the next one. All right, well, I hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.